Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, also here with Dave Vellante, my co-host, co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE. John Furrier is also with us this week. I have two, we have two guests for this next segment. We have Chris Shin, he is the VP and GM Data Protection at HPE. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Thanks Chris. Thanks for having me. And Matt Boris, VP Go-To-Market Sa Global Sales, Zerto HPE. Thank Thanks you both so much. I'm glad to be here. So I want to start by having you both talk a little bit in broad terms about what you're seeing in the market right now. We just had a guest on who was talking about how data protection, the, the landscape has changed so dramatically, even in the last couple of years. It used to be this, this sort of mundane box check, and now because of the, way, the ways in which threats have evolved and, and the need for cyber resiliency, customers think about it differently. What are your thoughts? Why don't, why don't we start with you, Chris? Sure, um, so I actually did a, a breakout earlier today on this and we talked about two specific phenomenon that we're seeing in the, uh, in the data protection market that are really, really dictating what all of the participants in the, in the market are doing, right? And the first one is um, we had the luxury for several decades of having sort of a single incumbent monopolizing uh, a hypervisor player in the market with, with VMware. They were basically in every organization. You could build your entire product suite around the expectation that VMware was going to be there. Increasingly, as we talk to customers for a variety of reasons, they're looking to spread that risk, be able to go on multi-different platforms, some in the cloud, some locally, some different hypervisors, some going to containers. The, it, the, the, what once was a very consolidated industry is fragmenting rapidly, right? And so we as a data protection vendor have to adopt and adapt to that reality, and that's what we're doing uh, in the market today. We already with Zerto have the ability to go from and to, in any combination, VMware, Hyper-V, AWS Cloud, and Azure Cloud. So we already have a fair number of the options uh, covered, but we're going to continue doubling down on that. The second thing that um, I'm sure you've heard from other people is, despite the fact that AI is kind of the prettiest girl at the dance today, um, nobody's forgotten about cyber, right, and ransomware and the threat landscape there. So whereas, uh, when I first got into the, the data protection market, the protection was against more national, natural disasters or power outages or floods, now, by a, a long shot, everybody's looking at protecting themselves against cyber threats. I mean, that was always there, but it's gotten much more acute and we're seeing survey after survey that suggests that people are just paying the ransom to get out of that problem. So we're adapting to both those realities in, in Zerto today. That's interesting, um, great perspectives. I hadn't really thought about the, the VMware dispersal. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, COVID sort of shone a light on the fact that our business resilience strategies were really DR focused. Yep. So many CIOs have told us that, that. And then you add in ransomware, security threats, everything, it's all come together. And now you've become a fundamental component of cybersecurity strategies. So where do you all fit in that value equation? So I think you hit it well, which is the, the market's changed, Chris mentioned it. It used to be just, I have to recover, it's okay if it takes me minutes, hours, or days, with the exception of some rare applications. The world has completely changed. No one's willing to not be able to click on an app and use it after a couple seconds. Where we really fit is the, the, the resume and recoverability. And what we're seeing is most of the customers out there rely on traditional backup technology. Nothing wrong with it, they're great partners of ours, they're, they're great companies out there. But when you rely on that technology, the, the analysts and the, the real world data says, people are down for anywhere from six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks, you're going to lose me as a customer, or we're all probably going to go to a different way if that happens. The, the solutions we're offering today are talking about recovering in seconds or minutes, and, be, and that is the, the true answer to you know, the problem that exists. And if you can't recover in seconds or minutes, you get the data back in seconds or minutes to see what the problem is, versus taking weeks and saying, oh, I got a problem with the data. Let me take weeks longer, I got a problem with the data. And that's what we're seeing happen. And when you add in all the, the bad actors, you add in the compliance issues that are out there, we're trying to streamline all of that for our customers, because as I said, I mean, downtime is just, it's just not acceptable in today's world. We all move away from it. I remember when I first got into this business, I was an analyst at IDC, 
and somebody said to me, you got to speak in business terms on this topic. You got to talk about RTO and RPO. <laughs> and I was like, that's business terms? I don't know one business person. Was, no, recovery time objective? Yeah. Okay, so recovery time objective, time it takes to get back, I guess, online. Yeah. RPO, recovery point objective, how much data you, know, you lose. 100%. And then when you ask people, so I said, if you want to talk in business terms, speak like this. How much data do you, do you, are you willing to lose? Right. And, and the business person goes, None. None. And then you say, how much, how big's the check you're willing to write? That's business terms. Now, what I'm inferring from what you're saying is that the technology has progressed so that you can get very fine granularity of RPO and RTO, Spot fast on. recovery times, and, and low RPOs, the RPO zero probably doesn't exist, um, at a much more cost effective you know, financial equation. Explain that. So it's funny you went there because like, to me, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> RTO and RPO, I know of it's the industry, it's where I live, but I usually don't talk to the CFOs and CEOs yeah. about it. it, right. it you're, you're spot on. We're at the point today where most industries are unwilling to have downtime. And if they're unwilling to have it, what is the, you know, how, do, how can they afford it? It has transformed to the point where it is, a, it is affordable to protect your environment because the alternative is just not feasible in today's world. So it's all about simplicity, it's all about flexibility, meaning we don't, as Chris, Chris said, it doesn't matter whether you're using VMware or you want to go to the public cloud or some hybrid cloud, the Zerto technology, the HP technology is b built on the idea that we don't care what you use, where you want to go, where you want to go from, and we'll work with you to figure out a cost-effective solution. So it's, it's about simplicity and cost effectiveness, but it's also about abiding by the law, because yep. we know that there are regulations, certainly in Europe, that will likely make their way to the U.S. very soon. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of what governments are, are, are doing uh, in terms of this moment. Well, first, I want to actually start with a use case that speaks directly to that. Um, we have a customer in, in, in a big financial institution in Europe, a fairly large VM farm, right? And they were trying to come up with a cyber recovery solution that would conform to the latest regulations over there, right? And using a backup-based technology, they had windows of vulnerability, data loss, 12 to 24 hours long. And the time it took them to get back up and running was roughly 30 days. No matter what they did, that was their reality, right? They switched to the Zerto cyber recovery solution that we launched a, a couple months back. And they were able to bring that down to a window of vulnerability of seconds and tested over and over again their recovery in a matter of hours. So they went from being completely out of compliance to completely in compliance by changing to using our CDP based solution which makes sure that every change that happens in the primary environment is committed to the secondary environment and ready for you to fail over to. One of the key things you said is you can test it. Yes. For years people wouldn't test their resiliency or disaster recovery and because it was too risky to test. It's true. They said well we'll fail over. We can't really test it yep. in, in, in full. Yep. But we think we're okay. <laughs> right? Well and that was Incredibly true. I mean, I mean, I'm old enough that I was one of the guys that was that was my job when I came out of college. It never worked. I mean, we'd, we'd all try, but it would never work. Different technology and different time. The regulations make it really clear, and they are more European focused today. But they're really clear that customers have to pay fines if they can't actually do certain things. I mean, one of them is if you go to an ATM and you can't check your balance, you have, you can be fined for that. So imagine like a bank being down for seconds and then that, and that happens. So the overall answer is these regulations are driving change in Europe, but if you're a US company that wants to do any business in Europe, you're affected by it now, and it will naturally head into the United States and other pieces. And so you, they have to be able to prove, I have a run book, this is how it works, and I can actually do a test. Because it used to be you want to do a test, but I can't, but no one really knows. I just, I, as a business, I know what my risk is, but I don't have to publicly tell people. Now you have to publicly tell people, which is a big, which is a little scary for these, you know. If I could add one thing to that, the other um, thing to, to remember is that HPE as a broad organization does a tremendous amount of business in various government sectors. So these regulations that are coming out in the public realm, we've actually had to comply with most of them for many years because they were requirements of one or the other governments around the globe. So we've got a little bit of a head start, I think, on some of that, um, some of that adaptation. I agree. Yeah. I want to ask you about the transformation of HP and HPE, the split. There were, there were data protection, backup assets, backup software assets inside of HP at the time. Uh, those got sold off, the security business, much of the security business got sold off. And that opened up a whole new world. Two things broadly happened. One is it exploded the partner ecosystem. Correct. 
uh, which there's an adjacency, I guess they overlap between you and you know, some of the big partners, H HP is not like super high, but there's overlap there, and it enabled M&A, and Zerto comes in an M&A. Yeah. Help us understand from the customer standpoint, like where you guys fit, how you fit relative to the, some of the partners in the ecosystem, what's the right strategic fit? You want to take you know, it on me? Uh, you, you start. Okay, I mean, for me, when I, when I think about Zerto, and the broader use cases for Zerto, it's, to me it's about cloud mobility, it's about mobility in general, on-prem or off-prem, it's about data recovery and resuming as quick as possible, which to me is the cyber world. That's really where it is. The partners out there, compliance, long-term retention, things that are super important to businesses, but for us, if a customer needs to recover quick and they need to resume their operations, I don't believe there's anything that's more reliable and faster on the planet. We've got 11,000 customers, we've been around for almost 15 years. All the other partners play parts into this, and we work every day with them, but it's just, like you said, it's an adjacency. We sell alongside them. That, that's the simplest way to put it. We sell alongside them every day, Matt does. That's where I thought you were going to go to, <laughs> I wanted you to start. But we do, honestly. There, there's a use case for DR for the most important workloads that you want zero downtime, and then there's a whole big, you know, you know, underneath of the iceberg, which needs to be backed up and protected, but may not need to be recovered like that, right? So they're really very, at the core, they're very different use cases. Obviously, as these waves like cyber and different things hit the, the shores, sometimes the messaging starts to get overlappy, but the, at the end of the day, the solutions are quite different. But, but the follow-up question then is, it's kind of that, is it a market or is it a feature question, but, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 um, it's part of an integrated strategy inside of HPE. Yep. So where do you fit with respect to the announcements that were made this week? What, what's in there that excites you? You got a shout out on the stage. Help us understand that. So, well, why don't you start with the announcement okay. you gave, yo. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so, so obviously we talked about a lot of things today. Um, we talked about private cloud for AI, we talked about a lot of the NVIDIA partnerships, talked about the training, talked about um, um, private cloud for AI, maybe I already said that, but oh, we talked about the, the hypervisor project that we're working on. Um, and so from our realm here in the Zerto sphere, we sit alongside a lot of those other technologies and as our technologies begin to adopt, for example, our KVM-based hypervisor, it's incumbent on Zerto to make sure that we can DR that, hypervi uh, that, um, that, that hypervisor. So one of the important things to remember as we move, as I said earlier, from a very VMware-centric world to a much broader world is that the ability to migrate from one platform to another and be multi-homed is going to be more important than ever. And what you, if you think about the way Zerto protects, if you can go from VMware to AWS, that suggests that you can re-platform into an AWS world from a VMware world. And so as we begin to build on this and add our own support for KVM, we have uh, the ability to help people not just DR, but move their workloads around and immediately and instantaneously, transparently re-platform them from one location to another in a hybrid, multi-cloud world. And what does that unlock for the customers? So you go right to where I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't, well, and we didn't even try that, you know, to put that together. Is one of the, the big features of Zerto before we were acquired was the, the flexibility. Was, hey, you know, we used to say it really didn't matter what your hardware solution is. Well, that changed. We, we become part of HPE, I'm an HPE shareholder, we want to be part of the vision, the strategy. We care about that. This, this announcement's super important for us because it continues to show that we as a company, yeah, we have a lot of solutions we're trying to sell, but if, you're, if you want to go to ADWS as a, as, a, as a customer, we're here to help you and support you. You want to go to another technology, we're here to support you. So the vision for us is the idea that we are still very flexible, we're still pu putting the research and development into what the market is dictating. The, the market for the first time with Broadcom's announcements is saying, maybe I'm going to go away from VMware, maybe I'm going I'm to do other things. Well, if you're going to do other things, we're going to be here for you on that. So th that's a big piece for our strategy, and the second point is, the vaulting technology, which is a newer thing in the, in the market, and relatively newer, the idea that people need an actual cyber vault. Now, the term is out there, it's, it, it's fluid, a lot of people use it different ways. For us, it's the concept that you need to be able to have something you know you can recover from, it's air-gapped, it's immutable. Zerto fits into that with an all-inclusive all appliance built on all HPE hardware and software. Super important for everything that we just talked about. You know, everything that's happening in the market. So I would rephrase my question. I said, is it a feature or a, or a market? It's a capability yeah. that's now integrated into the portfolio 
uh, whether it's compute, the storage, the yep. networking, yep. it's there. Um, and, and obviously it's a four pay service. Yep. Um, and you can dial it up and dial it down depending on your RPO and RTO. <laughs> right? and so it's all coming together. It yeah, makes yeah. a lot of sense now. The acquisition, you know, kind of makes sense where it fits. And um, that's good. Thank you yep. for that, helping us understand that. Thank you. It's a good show. Good, good. This is the biggest <laughs> discover I've been to. I love this tech talk. You can't really see yeah. on the camera. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Can. I was just watching, you know, we didn't talk much about AI, yeah. but I was watching <laughs> Dr. Lim Go, yep. who's all about AI, yeah. Yeah. Yes. laying, I'm like, wow, I got to go back and watch yeah. that talk on demand. It's <laughs> exactly. like some really exactly. good stuff. So thank exactly. you guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Chris you. And Matt, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante and John Furrier. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and and analysis.